learning objectives after studying this learning module you will be able to understand the factors that led to the under development of the indian economy explain land revenue policy know the condition of the agricultural sector and handicraft factories during british rule explain foreign trade policy of british government understand demographic condition and the existing infrastructure of india introduction and low economic development under the colonial power introduction an economy of a country consolidates all production distribution and financial activities of the people on the eve of independence india economy was in an awful shape due to the presence of british rule the britishers generally made the policies and rules that favored england economy and rapidly develops his industrial sector low economic development under the colonial power india had an independent economy before the advent of the british rule the farming practice was the prime well spring of livelihood in india however the nation's economy was reliant on various manufacturing activities india was well known for its handicraft industries in the field of cotton and silk materials metal and valuable stone works and so on these items were awesome notoriety globally due to the use of excellent quality raw materials britishers commanded almost 200 years over india they framed economic policies and strategies that secured and promoted the monetary interests of their country than with the improvement of the indian economy they changed the economic policy of india and transformed our nation into a provider of raw materials and customer of finished british industrial products such monetary arrangements influenced indian economy adversely and diminished the per capita income as well some social reformers and leaders were made to quantify such incomes yielded clashing and conflicting results dada bhai nawrojji v k r v rao and r c desai were some great people who estimate the national and per capita incomes amid the british rule and considered extremely critical agricultural and industrial sector agricultural sector agriculture was the prime source of livelihood in india during the colonial rule more than 80% of the indian population was lived in villages and reliant on agriculture directly or indirectly however a huge mass of the population was being dependent on agriculture this sector was confronting stagnation and unusual deterioration due to the following reasons less productivity the agricultural productivity was very low this led to the minimum benefit even used of the wide area under cultivation land revenue policy the britishers made the zamindari system the zamindars were perceived as perpetual owners of the land they made more benefit rather than the cultivators the main interest of the zamindars was just to collect rent irrespective of the economic improvement 
of the cultivators. Insufficient technology Inadequate facilities of irrigation and negligible use of manures and fertilizers has lessened the agricultural productivity. Even there was some evidence of a moderately higher yield of cash crops in several areas due to commercialization of agriculture. Industrial Sector Before the rule of Britishers, India was famous for its handicraft industries in the field of silk and cotton textiles, precious stone and metal works. Handicraft products had great demand worldwide. But the colonial government followed a deindustrialization policy and offered higher prices to the Indian peasants for cash crops. This policy has transformed India as a supplier of raw material and a consumer of finished products. It increased unemployment in India and the country became the importer of modest manufactured products from Britain. Amid second half of the 19th century, modern industry indicated slow upliftment. Subsequently, the iron and steel industries began coming up at the beginning of the 20th century. The Tata Iron and Steel Company, Tisco, was set up in 1907. Some other industries in the fields of sugar, cement, paper, etc. introduced after the Second World War. Another noticeable drawback of the new industrial sector was the restriction of the operational territory of the general population segment. This division was limited only to the railways, power generation, communications, ports and some other departmental endeavours. Foreign Trade and Demographic Condition Foreign Trade India has been a remarkable position in trading since ancient time. But the personalised policy followed by the British rulers adversely impacted the economic structure of India. Due to the personalised trading policy of colonial government, India became an exporter of cash crops such as cotton, silk, wool, sugarcane, jute, etc. The best place for selling British factory finished products the volume of India's exports was comparatively higher in comparison to its imports. Colonial government commanded more than half of India's foreign trade and rest allowed to trade with limited countries such as China, Sri Lanka and Iran. The opening of Swiss Canal in 1869 further intensified colonial government control over India's foreign trade. A considerable point of foreign trade during the British rule was the production of huge export surplus. This surplus ruined the country's economy. Several daily needs such as food items, clothes, kerosene were not available for common people in the domestic market easily. These basic things were used by the colonial government in order to make payments for several expenses, such as setup of industries and the import of valuable items. Demographic Condition The demographic conditions amid the colonial government enhanced all the features of a retrogressive economy. Various insights about the population were first gathered through an evaluation in 1881. Before 1921, 
India was in the first phase of demographic changes. The year 1921 is depicted as the year of great divide. After 1921, the population of India is increased constantly and quickly. The demographic conditions were as under. The general education level was below 16%. The female literacy rate was 7%. Overall mortality rate was high. The rate of infant mortality was 218 per thousand. The healthcare service was either unavailable or was in very unhygienic condition. Occupational Structure and Infrastructure Occupational Structure Amid the colonial rule, the occupational structure of India displayed its backwardness. The agricultural domain accounted for the biggest workforce, which typically stayed at a high of 70 to 75 percent, and the manufacturing unit and service divisions represented just 10 and 15 to 20 percent, respectively. There existed a developing regional disparity with few states, for instance, Orisha, Rajasthan, and Punjab, seeing an expression in the agricultural workforce, while the states Maharashtra and West Bengal witnessed a decrease in the reliance of the workforce dependent on the agriculture sector. Infrastructure Constructed roads in India preceding the colonial rule were not suitable for modern-day transport. The roads developed primarily just for the purposes of mobilizing the force inside India and transporting raw materials from the countryside to the port or closest railway station for trading different spots. The British government introduced railways in India in 1850. It is considered as one of the finest contributions of Britishers. The railways influenced the structure of the Indian economy adequately as it helped individuals to break land hindrances and promote commercialization in the Indian agriculture as well. The colonial government also introduced air transport services in 1932 by introducing Tata Airlines. Modern postal service began in India in 1837. The primary telecommunication framework line was opened in 1857. The service of electric telegraph system in India particularly filled for the purpose of maintaining law and order. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned in this module. An economy of a country consolidates all production, distribution and financial activities of the people. India economy was in an awful shape amid the presence of colonial rule. India was a remarkable place for its handicraft industries in the fields of cotton and silk materials, metal and valuable stone works. Britishers framed economic policies and strategies that secured and promoted the monetary interests of their country then with the improvement of the Indian economy. Although the huge mass of the Indian population was being dependent on agriculture, this sector was confronting stagnation and unusual deterioration due to less productivity, bad land revenue policy and insufficient technology. The Tata Iron and Steel Company, Tisco, was set up in 1907. 
the personalized policies followed by the British rulers adversely impacted the economic structure and India became an exporter of cash crops and the best market for selling British factory finished products.